I want to hear, my favorite word is the word hope. I want to hear what hope sounds like in all the different languages here in the room. One, two, three. Hope! That was pretty cool. All right, I liked that. That was good. And this is the legacy that I grew up with. That every child born can breathe fresh air, drink clean water, and walk on green grass under a blue sky. Pretty simple dream, don't you think? Something that every single child has the right to inherit. And that's Seven billion people on this planet. And it's a world where a lot of those people go home every night and don't have access to clean air or to fresh, clean water. I remember I was about 16 years old when I went on my first expedition. I was in Papua New Guinea. Now, in the highlands, you can still find tribes that are cannibals, that eat other people, and they live without many of the modern conveniences that you and I take for granted every day. Being a world with a growing population, with growing challenges that you and I will have to solve, especially you. It begs the question, how do we realize this dream? How do we create a world where every child born can breathe fresh air, drink clean water, and walk on green grass under a blue sky? And it represents a challenge that we face that as a species on this planet, we have never, ever had to face before. Water and energy, of course, are two, in my opinion, of the biggest challenges that we face going into the 21st century. When you think that China, over the next 25 years, is expected to create 600 gigawatts of coal-fired power, that's the same amount of coal-fired generation capacity that exists in the EU, the United States, and Japan combined today. I think it's important to understand that each and every one of us, the greatest role that we can have is to give people hope and to help them understand the power that they have to change the world. And that no matter what your passion is, no matter what you love, find that passion and follow that passion. In my life, there are really three main areas that I focus on. It all encompasses education and sustainability. Uh, the first one is media. It's really about storytelling and finding different ways and different opportunities for people to engage in sustainability. Media is an incredible opportunity to explore the world and to teach people new things. I've come to the Arctic Ocean near the North Pole on a vital mission. Only five feet of ice separates me from the frigid waters of the Arctic Ocean below. But the irony is that we know more about Venus or Mars than we do about this part of the world. This pretty much how it's done. <laughs> so media, powerful tool. I'm sure there are many of you out in the audience that love storytelling and technology and are writers and filmmakers and... And, and media is still an amazing way to explore the world and to share stories with people and new wonders and mysteries because there's a lot we still don't know. Maybe your passion is architecture or design or, or the built space and leisure and travel, whatever that may be, there's still opportunities to explore sustainability around buildings. One project in particular that we're working on is in the World Expo in Yosu in Korea this summer. We're designing the U.S. Pavilion and we're using the physical space as an amazing opportunity to tell stories and to teach and educate people. Education and philanthropy. This is something that's very close to my heart. Earth Echo International, the nonprofit that I run, be it uh, working with young people in Indonesia, really believe ultimately in the power of young people to change the world and in the role of each of us as storytellers and as people that not only change our own behavior and our own lives and make a difference in the food that we eat or the clothes that we buy or the things that we consume, but also the influence and impact that we can have on the people around us. There are ways that you can make a positive difference.